Hi, welcome to Buff Zone. I'm Kyle Ringo. This is Ryan Thorburn. We cover the University of Colorado Athletic Department for the Daily Camera newspaper. Our show, as always, is sponsored by Liquor Mart, 15th and Canyon, downtown Boulder. Stop by, pick up what you need to uh, watch your next basketball game with. Uh, the football season, as we know, is over. The Buffs lost a... Uh, a tough one against their rival, Nebraska, in Lincoln last week. Um, you know, it was just a game where Nebraska was clearly the better team and a uh, tough way to say goodbye to, to the Big Red, that rivalry, and the Big 12 Conference. But now it's on to figuring out who the next coach is going to be, the 24th head football coach at the University of Colorado, and uh, moving on to the Pac-12 Conference next year. And and hopefully a better future for the for the program. I know uh, everybody, from those of us who cover the team to those of us or the, those of you who you know pay for tickets and go to the games and and whatnot. Everybody sort of hopes for some more wins here in the future. But Ryan, you you watched uh, some of the game uh, against the Cornhuskers. What were your impressions, first of all, about the the way the season ended? Well, I just saw a team that was out of emotion as Brian Cabral said afterwards and you could kind of see that coming. They rallied around Brian, got two home wins over some mediocre opponents, you know, um, kind of got, as Brian said today, the pendulum swinging back in, in the other direction. But I mean, let's face it, Nebraska's in a better place right now. They're a better team right now. Uh, the game was in Lincoln. They're on a mission to leave the Big 12 in style. It was just a tough circumstance. And, and see you would have to play a, a really good game to, to even have a chance to win, and they didn't. So uh, it was kind of predictable. I think we were hoping to be more competitive, but, um, you know, it's time to move on now. Um, that ends the season. The miracle finish um, with an interim coach is over. Uh, I thought Brian did a tremendous job. I think he should be strongly considered for the job, but it's over, and now they need to hire someone as soon as possible. Yeah, so we obviously uh, met with Coach Cabral today at his end of the season uh, press luncheon, and uh, Brian informed us that he had interviewed for uh, the the head football coaching job with the search committee and athletic director Mike Bone uh, yesterday, which was Monday, and now he is like the rest of us, uh, waiting to hear uh, who they're going to hire and and uh, who they select as the best person to lead this program forward. I, I agree with you that I, I think Brian Cabral is a, uh, a viable candidate, definitely knows the game inside and out, knows the school inside and out, probably better than just about anybody out there, and, and could be a solid uh, choice uh, as the next coach. But I also think there are some other uh, worthy choices. I personally feel like based on the candidates we know to be actual candidates, uh, guys who've either been interviewed or are going to be interviewed, I kind of feel like the most dynamic choice, the best choice out of those people that we currently know here on Tuesday afternoon would be Eric Bieniemy, uh, the, the, the school's all-time rushing leader. He's a dynamic personality. Uh, on and off the field. He's a great recruiter. You know, there, there's plenty of evidence to back that up from his time here as, a, as an assistant coach under Gary Barnett in 2001 and 2002. And then his time at UCLA where he recruited, you know, some pretty, uh, pretty stellar players there. And, you know, Maurice Jones Drew, uh, running back who's now uh, with the Jacksonville Jaguars, Mercedes Lewis, who's a tight end at Jacksonville, and plenty of other players too. I, I just feel like Eric Bieniemy brings a lot of passion. He's a guy who is totally committed to the CU program. I mean, anybody who knows him, knows his history, knows that. And he's a guy who, if successful, could be here for 10, 15, 20 years if it worked out that way. So I, I kind of feel like that's who they should go with at this point. But, uh, you know, who knows where they will go. What's your sense of the search? Well, I think no matter who you bring in, you're going to be rolling the dice a little bit. There's no, to use Mike Bones, Dan Hawkins press conference, where there's no home run hire out there right now. I mean, you can throw out John Gruden. You can throw out, I threw out Brady Hoke, who's a very, very good coach. Got a bad reaction to that from fans. You can throw out all these big names um, and dream, but 
in reality, it seems like they're focusing in on someone with Colorado ties, and that might include Troy Calhoun at Air Force as a Colorado guy, uh, or a guy that's been around Colorado. But they're all risky hires in some way or another. Uh, Bill McCartney's a risk because he's been out of the game for a long time. Uh, he's 70 years old. Does he have the passion? Does he have the X's and O's of a Chip Kelly in the Pac-12? We don't know. It would be a little bit of a risk. I think his track re record suggests he could be a success here. Um, John Embry is a great assistant coach, a great NFL assistant coach, and a good recruiter. But he's never been a major head coach. I think he deserves a chance to do that, but there's a little bit of a risk there. Um, and the same thing with Troy Calhoun. He's a proven coach. I think he should be the Denver Broncos coach. I think he's that good. <laughs> but culturally, is he going to fit in Boulder? He's an Air Force cadet. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I think it's a totally different ballgame here. Um, so my, I'm in agreement with you. I think if you're going to take a risk, take it on a young, up-and-coming guy like Eric Bieniemy, who has Colorado ties, loves the buffs, can recruit like crazy, especially on the West Coast, and who has put together a plan, from what I've heard um, with his interview, that he has a, an impressive staff that he has in mind. So um, does he have head coaching experience? No, not even coordinator. That's a risk, but the, he's the risk I would go with. Yeah, you know, uh, when it comes to Eric Bieniemy, I've been told that uh, the, the list of staff members, potential assistant coaches that he shared with, with the search committee and with Mike Bone was pretty impressive includes some former buffs but uh, doesn't necessarily include any member of the current staff which is kind of eye-opening it, it wouldn't include Brian Cabral and I'm told that Darian Hagan who played on those those great teams of the late 80s and in 1990 obviously with Eric would would be considered for one of the positions on the staff but isn't a shoe in by by any stretch and, and so that's interesting to me but uh, I you know, Biennemi is a, is a risk in terms of he doesn't really, he's never been a play caller. He's never been the guy in charge of a program or of an offense even. Uh, has no coordinating experience, but you know what, he's a football guy. And I think we've kind of seen that, uh, you know, here we are making a case in some sense for Brian Cabral to be the coach. Brian Cabral has been an excellent football coach for for more than 20 years at the school, but Brian Cabral also has no head coaching experience, no coordinator experience outside of you know what he's done here the past month, and then you know his experience filling in for Gary Barnett uh, in the spring of 2004, which is a totally different thing. It's not really even true head coaching experience, if you ask me. So. Uh, you know, the knock on Eric Bieniemy might be that he has no coordinating experience, no head coaching experience, but, you know, there are other candidates in this mix who have that exact same knock on them. So I think his ability to recruit, his passion, his fire, his age, so to speak, I think all those things are, are really why I would kind of lean toward him when evaluating all these guys who all, like you said, have different risks. I don't have a problem at all with uh, Bienemy coming in and not retaining any assistance. I think Brian Cabral, the tone of the press conference I got today is that if he's not the head coach, it might be time for him to do something else, to work for someone else at a different program that he's always wanted to work for, or maybe interview for a head coaching job at Northern Colorado or somewhere like that. Kind of used these three games in his interview uh, process with CU as experience and how to do that. And I think. Uh, I just think if he's not the head coach that, that he understands that it might be time to do something else. As far as Hagen, um, you know, he, he's still probably got a chance to be on the staff, but let's face it, the last five, six, seven years have been down football. If you're going to start, start fresh. And I think, I think uh, the recruiting element of this cannot be underestimated. Uh, I think you know if you hire Eric Bieniemy, you know you're going to get some solid recruits in here, you know, not just in the next couple of months, but over the next few years. And, and what's going to help you build a winning program more than great recruiting? And, and you know, that, that's probably the biggest reason why I would lean toward uh, Eric Bieniemy. But a, a secondary reason is I just kind of see all these other candidates as being kind of lacking imagination and 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 whatnot from the search committee i mean i'm not sure that 
that uh, Troy Calhoun hiring him while he he is an excellent coach has a great reputation I'm not sure that that's going to go over well with the CU fan base I mean that's going to be kind of a dud if you ask me I don't care how uh, how much you try and sell it at your press conference how how loud Mike Bone you know speaks into the microphone I don't know that you can sell Troy Calhoun here and I think there's some questions with Troy Calhoun about you know you, you can't really question his coaching ability, but can he recruit at this level in a BCS conference in the Pac-12? Uh, you know, recruiting at this level versus recruiting to Air Force are two totally different things. So uh, I guess I, I'm totally on board with, with Eric Bieniemy in terms of the candidates we currently know about. One thing, another thing I like about Bieniemy is at Air Force, Troy Calhoun takes that personally. I mean, he has a lot of pride down there, and, and it shows on the field. I think Bienemy, if you've watched any Vikings game, when Adrian Peterson isn't running well, he takes that personally, and he is emotional about it. If CU is losing on his watch, he's going to take that personally. He's going to get emotional about it. He's going to do something about it. I think just from his attitude, it's going to uplift the current players, and his recruiting is really going to help. Brian Cabral said it today. We have a solid foundation. That'll give us a chance, at least, to compete in the Pac-12. But in order to fix this, it, it has to be on the recruiting trail, and that, that has to be a major upgrade, and I think that's the enemy's strength. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, they're going to make a decision sometime here in the next week or 10 days, and, and we'll be back to talk about uh, that decision and, and to talk about whoever they decide is going to lead this program into the future and then obviously we'll we'll talk about uh, the future at that point too so come back and join us then and we'll also be with you throughout the remainder of the basketball season here as uh, coach tad boyle tries to get the buffs into some postseason play uh, whether that's a ncaa tournament probably a little bit far-fetched at this point but you know, maybe an NIT bid or, or something else. I don't know. You, you cover that team more than I do and obviously know more about it than anybody on the beat. So uh, what do you think preliminarily about the, the way the basketball season's gone so far? Well, I think they've already lost to a, uh, a West Coast Conference team that's in the middle of the pack there and, a, and an Ivy League team they were blown out by. So I'm saying no on NCAA tournament unless they – dramatically improve and upset Kansas and Kansas State and get some quality wins to make up for those. It's, it's disappointing because if Jeff Buzdilic were here for his fourth year, it was NCAA tournament or bust for him. But with a new staff, even though the talent's there, there's that excuse, the transition, and it's a legitimate one. They, they're, they're learning things on the fly. It's not going well early. So it's too bad because they're going to perhaps squander uh, one of their best teams since Chauncey Billis was here, which is too bad. Yeah. Well, we'll be back to uh, talk more about that and the football thing uh, as we go forward here and looking forward to see who they hired.